In late 2016, Elon Musk revealed his vision for solar roofs in an effort to convince shareholders that building out Solar City was the right move. Unlike regular solar panels that are bulky and arguably take away from the look of the house, solar roofs were supposed to look like regular roof shingles. Nearly five years later though, we haven't really seen solar roofs roll out in a grand fashion. Moreover, Solar City, or now Tesla Energy, continues to face major issues when it comes to liquidity and profitability despite getting a bailout and being in business for 15 years. So, what happened to Solar City? Well, taking a look back, Solar City was founded on July 4, 2006, by Lyndon and Peter Reeve. Though these two were technically the founders and the ones who ran the business day to day, the backbone of the company was Elon Musk from day one. After hitting the jackpot with PayPal, Elon was looking to work on something that was more meaningful and impactful. The two sectors that he thought were most important were space and sustainable energy. In terms of space, he of course had SpaceX, and in terms of sustainable energy, he had Tesla. But he really wanted to do something in the solar energy sector, so he would pitch the idea to his cousins Lyndon and Peter Reeve. Willing to give the idea a try, Lyndon and Peter would start the company with a $10 million investment from Elon. Within just 12 months, the company would hire 150 employees and grow to installing 70 solar systems per month. From the very beginning though, Lyndon knew that the biggest barrier for success was the high cost of purchasing and installing the solar panels. So, he pitched a new business model that would eliminate the upfront cost for the customer. The idea entailed Solar City owning the solar panels and the company paying for the installation costs. Customers would essentially rent the panels and pay Solar City for the power generated by the panels. This agreement was called a PPA, or a Power Purchase Agreement, and they would typically last 20 years. Customers also had the option to finance the panels and eventually take ownership of the panels. And of course, customers could also buy the panels outright from Solar City. But the renting model is what was unique to Solar City and what drew attention to the company. Not only did this model make solar panels much more attainable for the average person, but it also allowed Solar City to build up a significant stream of recurring revenue. Throughout the next couple of years, this innovative model would allow Solar City to aggressively expand across California and a dozen other states. But despite this rapid expansion, the leasing model proposed two major drawbacks that would eventually crush the business. First of all, Solar City had to front about $40,000 for each PPA installation which drove them into massive debt. The hope was that the recurring revenue would eventually be so big that the installation expenses wouldn't be that big of a deal. But accomplishing this requires extreme economies of scale, which Solar City was never able to reach. An even bigger problem though was that leasing solar panels from Solar City wasn't actually that cost effective. Sure, it was cheaper than installing solar panels yourself in terms of upfront cost, but it was way more expensive over the long term. By switching to solar, the idea is to completely eliminate your monthly electric bill, or at least significantly reduce it. However, when you pay rent for the solar panels and a fixed rate for the electricity the panels produce, Solar City not only didn't lower your electric bill, but it often even made it more expensive than simply buying electricity from the grid. To make things even worse, you don't even get the tax benefits for using solar. Since Solar City owns the solar panels, they get the solar credits. Considering this, the people leasing from Solar City were primarily doing it as an environmental move as opposed to a financial move. Despite these fundamental issues with the business model, there were a lot of people who were interested nonetheless, and this allowed Solar City to continue their rapid expansion. In 2012, Solar City went public at $8 per share, and the stock exploded 47% on the first day of trading. By 2014, Solar City was killing it. They had racked up 70,000 customers. They owned one third of the residential market, and they were completing more installations than their next 50 biggest competitors combined. Considering their dominance, it's not surprising to hear that their stock had grown over 10x to $86 per share. Once again though, there were major issues under the hood. In order to keep up with exponential growth, the company put out extremely ambitious sales goals. Linden, for instance, proposed reaching 1 million installations by 2018. To keep up with these targets, sales reps started to become more and more sleazy. A former sales director describes that the proposition was, just sign here, don't worry, you can cancel any time. According to him, people were treating it like signing off on iTunes terms and conditions. In other words, people had no idea what they were getting into. 
and they weren't happy when they saw their first bill. The company's average cancellation rate surged to 45%. Meanwhile, the door-to-door -door sales team had an average cancellation rate of 70%. Solar City was also having an extremely tough time funding their solar installations as the company continued to grow. Their credit lines were drying up, and the company started to rely on investments to keep their installations going. At the same time, Solar City was also facing massive external issues. First of all, the 30% federal solar tax credit was about to expire in 2015, which meant that Solar City super high installation costs were about to balloon another 30%. Fortunately, the tax credit would be extended, and at first it seemed like this was a good thing for Solar City. But this was actually not the case. You see, over the past 10 years, solar panel technology had massively improved which radically drove down the cost of installation. The average cost to buy and install solar panels had dropped from about 40k in 2006 to just about 20k by 2015. Combine this with a 30% tax credit and customers could now buy their own solar panels for just about $13,000. So, the appeal for renting solar panels from SolarCity was dwindling and the company would be forced to change their focus. In February of 2016, the company announced that the core of their business would shift to selling and financing solar panels as opposed to leasing them out. This would prevent their monthly recurring revenue from growing, but it would help them deal with their massive debt as well. Wall Street, however, was not convinced that SolarCity would actually become profitable by making the switch and they would start dumping the stock. Jim Cramer famously stated that this was the worst conference call of 2016. As investors started to pull the plug, SolarCity entered a financial crisis as the company was relying on investments to keep the lights on. Considering this dire situation, Elon would call Linden in February of 2016 and suggest combining Tesla and SolarCity. Elon would turn around and propose the idea to Tesla's board as well. But Tesla's board really had no interest in buying SolarCity. Tesla themselves were burning 50 cents for every $1 of revenue. Meanwhile, SolarCity was burning $6 for every $1 of revenue. So, Tesla acquiring SolarCity would no doubt be a bailout. As a result, they rejected Elon's proposal. In an effort to prop up SolarCity, Elon would use reserves from SpaceX, where he had majority control, to buy $90 million worth of bonds from SolarCity. Elon would continue to pressure the board to invest in SolarCity, and Elon would get his way in June of 2016 when Tesla offered to acquire SolarCity for $2.8 billion. SolarCity investors were ecstatic as Tesla was bailing them out, which caused the stock to rally 15%. Meanwhile, most Tesla investors weren't exactly pleased as Tesla stock would dump 10% after the announcement. And this is when Elon would host that rather infamous presentation about the future of solar roofs. At the time, solar roofs were nowhere near ready to be deployed. In fact, when Elon saw the prototype version of the solar roof tiles, sources say that Elon told Peter that he was wasting his time and that the product was a piece of crap. Tesla would later clarify that Elon simply didn't like the first iteration and that he actually liked the underlying concept itself. Anyway, Despite knowing that solar roofs weren't quite ready, he would come on stage and pitch the idea in order to ease tensions with Tesla investors, who were strongly against the acquisition. Fortunately for Elon, shareholders would approve the acquisition in November, and Tesla would acquire the company later that month. After the acquisition, SolarCity, or now Tesla Solar, would go on to fire 3,000 employees, or about 20% of their workforce. Tesla would also place heavy focus on shifting away from the leasing model and instead focusing on selling panels. Over the next few years, Tesla Solar's revenue from solar panel sales would increase from just 2% to 31%. It should be noted though that during this time period, Tesla Solar's installations dropped by 40%. So, Tesla was completing far fewer installations, but the installations they did complete were purchases as opposed to leases. In the meantime, Linden would leave the company in 2017, citing that it was time for him to move on. To this day, Linden holds that SolarCity didn't need a bailout from Tesla. He claims that SolarCity could have easily raised more money and stood up by themselves. While that may be true, there's no question that Tesla made it magnitudes easier for the business to survive. Today, Tesla Solar is still not quite profitable and the vast majority of the revenue comes from selling and installing regular old solar panels. However, Tesla has recently been able to absorb the losses from the solar division and still be profitable. With the rise in popularity of Tesla cars, many Tesla owners have also expanded to buying Tesla solar panels along with Tesla power walls. This has allowed SolarCity to take on a new and refreshed form with a much brighter future. Tesla has also started to roll out their fancy solar roofs, but this is still super limited 
not to mention extremely expensive. On my house, for example, buying regular Tesla solar panels would cost $24,600. Buying the fancy solar roof, however, would cost $62,354. So clearly, Tesla has a long way to go in terms of making a solar roof affordable for the masses. But as Tesla's core business continues to grow and generate more profits, and as solar technology continues to improve, hopefully we will eventually see Tesla Solar reach Elon's vision and substantiate the efforts of Solar City. Do you guys have a positive opinion on Solar City? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys are rooting for Tesla Solar. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.